Hey, it's Patty Sharp, CPA and co-founder of Catching Clouds, the leader in e-commerce accounting. And last week we talked about dealing with credit card sub accounts in Zero, and I showed you the manual method of taking care of that. And it's a little bit, it requires a little elbow grease, um, but it, it's not too bad and can give you some good results. Here is the way that we actually do it, and um, it's a little bit more automated, but it does require proper setup and understanding of what's going on. So let's get started. Okay, so just as a reminder, um, the reason why we care about this is because Bank of America, Chase, lots of different credit cards, they have systems where they will, they, when you apply for a credit card, they'll set you up with a credit card and that becomes your card. But then if you have employees or anybody else you want to be making purchases on your account, they will create sub accounts. And those sub accounts will each have their own different credit card. And when you try and keep track of the accounting in Zero, for example, then you've got multiple different streams of data and Zero doesn't pull in all of those at the same time it treats them differently. So uh, you need to know how it works so that you know how to set it up in zero so that it can be as painless as possible so that you can reconcile your account at the end of each payment period. Okay, so um, so I showed you last week how to do that using the manual method, uh, but this is like the more advanced method for people who uh, who, who want it to be a little bit more automated, all right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your chart of accounts. So go up to settings, chart of accounts, and you're gonna create a, a bank account, which is how it's done in Xero, um, but you're doing this for your credit card. So if you were to set up a new bank account, once you go to set it up, let's say we were doing one for Chase, it knows it's a credit card. So even though it looks like a bank account in Xero, it's it's gonna be a special bank account, okay? So you're gonna go to your chart of accounts and you're gonna set up a bank account for each of your different credit cards. The way I like to do it is I have the main card number here and then I'll just put a colon and then the card of the individual card numbers, okay? The last four digits. That way you know exactly which one you're working with. Step two is gonna be, you're gonna set up a separate bank feed for each of the, these cards. So when you go into your dashboard, you're gonna see all these different cards are set up. Because it's set up as a bank account, it's gonna show up on your dashboard. So you're gonna go on here and you can click on this box that says get bank feeds. You could also go to these three dots and say start feed now. And it'll ask you for, if you haven't set up a bank feed on any of these cards, it'll ask you for your username and password. If you've already done that, and this is just a sub account to one that's already set up for a bank feed in Zero, it's gonna ask for the matching bank feed. So basically you just go pick which one it is that you're looking for, and we're gonna say it's that one, and then you pick how far back in time you wanna go. It might be all available transactions, it might be two months ago, whatever it is, okay? And then when you do that, you'll have the bank feed that's set up for each of these different accounts. Okay, so step three, I want you to go into your balance sheet and I want you to go to the bottom and edit the layout. Go under layout options, edit this layout. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna combine all of the different credit cards that are associated with that main account and you're gonna create a group. So for this one, I created a group called Chase Inc. 4313, and then all of my individual sub accounts are underneath that. If you look at the group, I have this box check that says show summary only, so that when you look at the balance sheet, all of the accounts are in this one balance. So that's really great because when you get your statement from Chase, it's gonna have all of those amounts totaled together under that one account. Okay, but you can also get the detail and split it out so that you can see what the balance is on each and every card. Okay, so, so that's really great. Okay, so step four is where everybody gets tripped up because they set up the bank feeds and they're humming along and everybody's happy, but what's happening is the payments only get applied at that very top level 
So if you don't transfer the balance from the sub accounts to the main account, those sub accounts are just gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. All right, so let me show you how to keep that balance from growing and growing and growing. What you do is you go to that card on your dashboard. If you go to the transactions, you'll see that there are all these charges and then the total balance as of the 16th of the month, which is the date that that credit card closes, we transfer the entire balance to the main card. Okay, so this becomes kind of like a clearing account where you just, you charge, 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 move all the balance to the main card, charge, 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 move the balance to the main account so that this ends up being zero every time that the statement closes, okay? So if you were to look at these, you'd see the balances from these three cards got transferred over to this main, ac main account and it looks like another charge, but basically we're just lumping all those together and moving them over. And then you'll notice over here that these are reconciled by the user instead of existing as a bank feed. This tells you that it's a manual transaction, okay? So, um, so when we have transactions that come over, we will reconcile them as part of the process. We go, yes, this matches the total transactions on the statement, and we will go up here and we will mark this as reconciled. If you do not see this button, go up to the question mark up here and say, enable mark as reconciled, and that'll show up for you, okay? Use that with caution, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, you should only use this when you really, really know what you're doing, okay? So, um, so yeah, so we reconcile those by hand, then they exist on here, and then we will compare the balance in this account to the, the actual statement. If you don't know how to reconcile your account, go watch this video. Um, but that's really all there is to it. it. It sounds a lot more complicated, I think, than it actually is in practice because once it's set up, all the transactions, no matter whose card it is, shows up and it shows up daily. So if you have somebody that you kind of want to keep an eye on, that they're, they're maybe charging things that they shouldn't be, it's going to notify you right away instead of the other method where you might only download stuff once a month or when you get the statement, you're not as on top of things. So I really like this method, even though it has a couple extra steps that make it a little quirky. So um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and share. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll catch you later.